What is up my YouTube family? I am uh, making this video from beautiful Rocky Mountain National Park, Colorado. It's incredible here. It's a, it's a absolutely beautiful sight to be here. I'm freezing my balls off just so you know. Like, it's insanely cold. I'm from Texas, Houston, Texas, where it's hot. And you don't see white shit like this out in Houston. What is this? What is this stuff? Frozen water? We don't ever see that. <laughs> Today, guys, I have been inspired by a close friend of mine who is uh, becoming very prominent in how amazing she is and her inspiration. She's just such an inspiration to so many people in the magic communities on Facebook. And she inspired me to make this video, you know? She asked me about something in passing about wealth and it kind of triggered me in a positive way to start discussing what I feel about wealth ceilings and how to break through them, so to speak. In the magical sense, I notice there's people, you know, that, and I'm guilty of this too, guilty is not the right word. I have exhibited this too, and I have fallen into a trap. And I say it's a trap, and it's not really that big of a deal because it's a human desire. People like money. Money makes the world go round, right? And people want a lot of money and they want it fast. How can you get a lot of money and a lot of money fast? Well, there's a few different ways that can happen. But how equipped are you to actually handle the money that you are asking for? Right? Everyone has a ceiling. Everyone has a limit at what they are capable of earning. And this is a allegorical limit as much as it is a tangible limit. And it is important for everybody. Check out that view in the background. It's important for everybody to know what their limit is, right? What is your wealth ceiling? Where are you capped at? What are you capped at as far as how much you can earn? Where am I going with all this? You know, I, I began it by saying there's a wealth ceiling and people ask for money, and it's, there's no problem asking for money. You can ask for a thousand dollars, you can ask for two thousand dollars, but if you're limit in how much you can earn is capped at $200 a month and you are asking for $1,000 in the course of one month, are you really equipped to handle that? Are you equipped to handle the responsibilities that come with having a lot of wealth? And I'm kind of saying it in the sense that asking for temporary money would require challenging your wealth ceiling and I should rephrase that. What I'm actually trying to get at is people who want to build a life of wealth, who are craving money on a constant basis and having abundance for a long time, and they want 10 times the amount of money in their pockets that they have right now, and they want that on a consistent basis, right? And if that's where you're at, but your wealth ceiling is capped at your current limit, are you equipped to be able to handle 10 times that amount? What is actually that all that talking about? Okay, so I am referring to the responsibilities that come with having 10 times the amount of money that you have at the moment. It's not that easy in many ways, I'm saying this in many different angles, to go from $100 a week to $1,000 a week. I mean... There's some responsibilities that you have to take into consideration. First and foremost, how much time are you willing to sacrifice to be able to get to that level? Nothing in this world that's worth having and worth having for the long haul and that you're able to have for the long haul can come overnight. And if it does come overnight and you're not prepared to handle it, it will disappear just as quickly as it came. So are you prepared to handle some of the things like being able to sacrifice some time, some more energy? Are you willing 
to change your mindset. There's a lot of people out there who have the employee mindset and it actually aggravated me when I saw on a Facebook page, one of the magical Facebook page, someone was asking, hey, I want to get in, started into investing. And a bunch of people talked him out of it. And I was irritated and aggravated at seeing people talking him out of it because the way that they were talking him out of it came from a place of fear, came from a place of lack, came from a place of not understanding that it takes risk and it takes a lot of sacrifice and a possibility to lose everything that you have in order to make it big. That's the kind of determination and sacrifice that you need to be willing to make in order to maximize your wealth ceiling or maximize the amount of wealth that you have in accordance with how tall your ceiling is. There's a certain criteria that is required to get to the next zero after the number or the next comma and that is managing people. Are you okay with telling people what to do and are you okay, okay with being the bad guy? Are you okay with being a manager that nobody likes but people respect? It's something that I'm actually in the process of dealing with personally at work. You know, I've been a general manager now for I want to say about a year. I kind of just took myself upon a lot of tasks at the company. Took them upon myself because I saw that there was a there was a void in the company and I kind of took the initiative and just like hopped on it. It wasn't asked of me. It wasn't like delegated to me. I took that opportunity and ran with it and now I'm general manager uh, pretty much and I'm second in command to the owner of the company because I took ownership of like I saw these missing pieces and I was like okay I see this as an opportunity and I'm gonna hop on it and let's do this thing. I've been told by a lot of people, a lot of my friends, well-wishers, people who I consider family they were like, are you getting paid extra to do all that you're doing? And the time that you stay after work and go in before work, not on the clock, are you getting paid for that? That's all employee mindset and that's all limiting to wealth ceiling. And that's indicative of their own wealth ceiling. As far as what is required to make it to the level that I'm trying to go, and trust me, I have a cap too. And mine is continually being challenged. And I have to continue to challenge that. And I do that in a lot of ways. Some of it is magical. Some of it's non-magical. It has to be a, a nice blend of both spiritual and non-spiritual and mundane and physical and secular. We're on planet Earth. you got to use some of the great tactics that human beings have discovered in personal development. I forgot where I just went with that tangent. I'm sorry. But back to the work that I did in the last year off the clock and that was not required of me or requested of me uh, it's it kind of it was born from the fact that I find great passion in what I do and work is not work for me I don't go into wake up in the morning and be like oh, okay I gotta go get ready for work it's that's not even a that doesn't phase me it doesn't occur to me that way that's not how my mind is operating these days it's like all right cool. I'm going to go do something that I really enjoy doing. I get up in the morning and it's like, I get excited because work is not just a nine to five for me. It's, it's like, I find passion, I find purpose, I find drive, I find all kinds of things. And I'm learning about an industry that I could have given two shits about a couple years ago. But I'm able to shine because I have the freedom to kind of just take what I want and run with it. And because of my initiative and because of my desire and everything that I've done without being asked, I've been basically promoted to run the company. I'm running the company. Uh, as hum I gotta say that as humbly as possible because I'm not no big shot. I'm just someone who decided to take control of my surroundings, my environment, and not be a victim to fucking circumstance, which if you're a victim to circumstance, you will never be wealthy. If you look at the world as fucked up, because of racism or because of you have it bad and other people don't like good luck ever becoming wealthy you're going to be a victim of circumstance for the rest of your life i can't change the fact that i'm an indian born in a um, uh, indian man born in america i've experienced my fair share of discrimination and racism i don't let it define me i don't let that even though it is reality it is something that i have dealt with 
it is not pertinent in my life because I choose not to look at that. Everybody has equal opportunity in this country of the United States. I firmly believe that whether racially you believe that or not is up to you and that's your journey. But I'm holding in my hand while talking to you a T-Mobile cell phone, which I pay for. And the data and the Wi-Fi that I have access to gives me access to any information that I want in the entire world. I've learned a lot about a lot of stuff on my phone. And there's no excuse anybody has for being where they're at in life if they want to be further, if they're not doing anything about it. So a victim of circumstance is somebody that does not acknowledge that they have the resources, every resource that they ever need in the entire world at their fingertips and choose to make a difference and change their circumstance. Doesn't matter where you live, doesn't matter what your family environment is. I have came from pretty fucked up history. I was heavily addicted to drugs and alcohol until 2014. I take ownership of that. I destroyed a lot of things in my life. I have two felonies and four misdemeanors. I didn't let that stop me. I'm not letting that stop me. I don't let that define me. There's no victim of circumstance here. There's an opportunity for everybody. And like, what are you gonna do? So each new ceiling, each new level that you try to hit, as far as the wealth ceiling, demands, it demands a higher responsibility, and it demands that you work on yourself, and the spirits love that. The spirits absolutely love when you take initiative. In fact, spirits will get pissed off if you're asking for all that money, and like, you don't do shit about it. Like, if you're not putting in the legwork, if you ask the, the angels of omnipotence to guide you and shape you into a reality where wealth flows abundantly and you're not getting up off your butt to do it they're not going to take too kindly for that the angels will sit back and be like ain't nobody got time for this shit let me go help somebody who is willing and able and ready to accept my help and that's kind of how this working relationship with these spirits are is like you put in your half of the bargain and they fulfill their destiny by doing what you ask them to but you got to work with them right anyway I've rambled quite a bit Thank you to my friend who inspired me to make this video. It's not that much on magic, but it is on wealth destruction. Wealth ceiling destruction, not wealth destruction, fuck that. Uh, anyway guys, thanks for watching. And hope you enjoyed the scenery and me walking back and forth. Peace.